Hello, everyone. You're listening to another episode of the Sound Solutions Podcast with Music Works. My name is Anala, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to talk about surviving and thriving in your music therapy internship. I completed my music therapy internship here at Music Works in San Diego in December 2016, and so I've been board certified for almost two years now. To become a music therapist, one needs to complete a bachelor's degree program in music therapy or an equivalency program, a master's degree program in music therapy. Um, During that time, Uh, You complete four semesters of clinical hours, practicum hours, and once you've finished all your coursework, then you need to do a six-month internship. Sometimes they're nine months, but there's a certain requirement of hours, uh, over a 1,000 hours of clinical work at a facility or an agency. So that's a very significant period of time where music therapist transforms from student to clinical music therapist to professional music therapist. And then after internship, um, one would need to take the board certification exam. Um, So that's a standardized exam that all music therapists have to take that approves them to say, yes, you are a music therapist, you're certified, and we have a certain standard uh, scope of practice that we have to maintain. So that's just some info for some of you who might not know about the steps to becoming a music therapist. So for all of you out there who are listening who are currently music therapy interns or students and you are completing your coursework, you might be applying to internships right now or starting to look at what internships are out there, um, you're in the right place. This podcast is for you. We're going to talk about what are some of the challenges of internship and How do you make the most of your internship experience? So, of course, the first challenge that you're going to encounter is just the application process of getting into an internship on the AMTA national uh, website, musictherapy.org. You're going to find a listing of all uh, nationally rostered uh, internships, or your university might have a university-affiliated one. So searching for internships can be very daunting, I know from personal experience. There's so many things to look at. There's so many internships out there, and you want to find one that's going to be a good fit for you where you're going to succeed the most. And not all internships are going to be the best fit for every single person. You have to find one that works for you. So as you're applying to internships, you really got to make a list and prioritize what um, is most important to you. So that might be location, it might be a stipend, if, if that internship provides a stipend or any type of compensation, um, it might be population, it might be setting, you know, whether that's a private agency or a facility like a hospital or a school. Um, And yeah, I think those are some ideas that I can think of right now. So make a list. What are your priorities? If it's stipend, that's going to be at the top. You're going to want to try and find internships that do provide a stipend or some type of compensation. If it's population, which it was for me, the one reason that I applied to Music Works is because the internship involved working with a wide variety of populations. And the main focus was on medical, adult medical, which is something that I was really interested in. So that's why I applied to Music Works. So think about what is your priority. Maybe it's location. You want to live at home or maybe you want to explore and travel somewhere new and live in a new place. That's another good reason to look at internships in a specific area. So once you've made those priorities, it's going to narrow down your list of available internships. Um, And then, you know, you go out, make those connections, um, send in your application, and all of that good stuff. Um, We're actually going to be having a webinar called Making the Most of Your Music Therapy Internship 
which I'll be teaching. That's on January 30th. So you all should join and attend the webinar. We're going to talk even more about all of this good stuff. Once you start your music therapy internship, it's sort of an overload of information. Um, I am I have experienced this myself, and now I'm a uh, one of the internship supervisors. I supervise all the interns um, who are working in the medical placement. And I would say the first month especially, just from my personal experience and what I've seen my interns going through, is feeling overwhelmed, excited, ready to jump in, so much information to absorb, so much knowledge to gain, hungry for for getting the most uh, knowledge and experience. My advice for you for your first month of internship is to take a deep breath, slow down, and be mindful. It's great to be eager and excited and willing to learn. Keep that fire and that excitement, but also take one thing at a time. If you have other... um, senior interns that you might be shadowing or a staff member that you might be shadowing, know that they're at a different place than you. They might have already completed, you know, three months of internship or they might have been a professional music therapist for a couple years now. Where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. So don't get too down on yourself and feeling like, oh my gosh, my skills are not up to par. Um, I'm not as good as this other music therapist or this other intern. You know, I really need to do this and this and this. And maybe a lot of wave of self-doubt comes in like, I'm not going to be able to get there. Don't worry. You will get there. It takes time. Everyone has gone on this journey. All music therapists have gone on this journey of becoming, transforming from student to professional. And that process looks different for every single person. So month one, month two of your internship, slow down, take things one thing at a time, you know, just absorb that information and that experience. Um, Once you kind of get past that and you're starting to get in a rhythm and you're uh, figuring out what your day-to-day looks like and you're getting more familiar with the different settings that you're working with or the different clients that you're working with, um, really start to set some intentional goals for yourself. You know, the different domains of goals that you want to focus on are musical skills, of course. So maybe your strength is piano, so you need to work more stylistic guitar skills. Or maybe you need to work on your singing or playing blues or whatever that is for you, musical skills. Choose some objectives that are realistic and that you can achieve within whatever amount of time. Maybe, you know, in three months, I want to be able to play, you know, blues, a basic blues on guitar with a couple of riffs. That might be a goal for you. Um, Don't get too excited and thinking like, I'm going to become the most amazing blues guitar player by the end of three months. Do something that's realistic because a lot of other things are going to pile up over time and you want to be able to succeed um, and achieve your goals. Clinical skills. So that might entail um, counseling skills. That might entail like improving your documentation. Um, There's a lot of different things that can come under clinical skills. Again, choose objectives that are going to be realistic for you. Um, Professional skills. So maybe one of your professional goals might be co-treating more with physical therapist or speech therapist or a nurse or something like that. And you want to get more experience in that area. Maybe another professional goal might be presentation skills. You might feel nervous or uh, not very confident when you're speaking in public. As music therapists, we have to present and advocate so much because that's what's going to get us jobs. Um, 
for music therapists, there might not always be job postings available for music therapists, but there is a huge need for music therapists. People just don't know about it yet. So you have to have presentation skills. That's an example of a professional goal that you might have. Um, you know, maybe it's a writing skills. So, so far we have musical, clinical, professional. And then I think another important aspect of succeeding in your internship is having some personal goals too because it's really important to maintain a healthy work-life balance, internship and life balance. Your personal goals might be, you know, to uh, do more creative things outside of your internship. So that might be writing songs for yourself or it might be creating art or writing, journaling. Um, another personal goal might be to uh, get to know people outside of your internship, outside of your facility that you're working in, start to hang out with more people, um, build a community in your life, you know, connect with people who have the same interests as you. A uh, personal goal might be to, I don't know, it might be fitness, it might be spending more time outside, it might be developing a better self-awareness or practicing mindfulness. I don't know. You know what your, your personal goals are, your self-care goals. Um, it's so important to maintain self-care during internship. Um, so we'll get into that in just a second. So develop your goals after, you know, a couple weeks or a month. Clinical, personal, professional, musical skills. And talk about those goals with your internship supervisor or internship director. They'll actually probably ask you to write down your goals as a part of your baseline evaluation that you do. Um but just make sure that you have that and that you're developing goals and objectives, just like you would for your clients, but do it for yourself. Do it in a reasonable amount of time. You know, don't expect crazy things from yourself. Be ambitious, reach for your goals, but also be gentle on yourself and be realistic with yourself. Um, this brings me to my next point, self-care during internship. Um, one thing that I always tell my interns is that self-care looks different at each stage of your internship. Um, I have a couple interns who tell me, like, during the first month, I was so good. I was packing my lunches in the morning. I was, you know, doing yoga every day. I was going to the gym. I was, like, hanging out with friends outside of internship. But once it hit my third, my fourth month of internship, I just couldn't do it anymore. The work was piling up. Um, so I, th I guess my advice for maintaining self-care is always maintain self-awareness. What do I need right now in this moment? Sometimes after a long day of internship, you just need to go home and have some introvert time. Just be quiet, be alone, no music. There might be too much music that's happening. Um, you know, in work and you just need some quiet time. Watch Netflix or whatever whatever feeds your soul. Um, there might be other times where, you know, something that is really going to energize you is going out, hanging out with people, um, spending time with people outside of work. That's also really important. Self-care might also look like saying no to things. There's always going to be things that pop up during internship, um, whether it's in your personal life or in internship. Of course, you need to fulfill your responsibilities of what your internship director requires of you. Um, but there will also probably be some other stuff that comes up. So know what you can handle and try to figure out this balance of you know, working hard, you know, fulfilling your responsibilities, going the extra mile to learn, and then also saying no to things if it's going to be detrimental to your self-care. Another challenge that many interns encounter is with your drastic increase in caseload, 
you're working with a lot more patients or clients than you did during your practicum experiences because you're working full time, right? You're seeing a lot of people or you're seeing your clients way more often than you used to. So a challenge that comes with that is this burnout and compassion fatigue that might happen. Um, One of our interns created a really awesome online course on the hub, musictherapyandwellnesshub.com, and it's all about self-care for interns. And she did a survey and asked, I think, 96 students what they wanted to learn, what would be helpful for them for a surviving internship. And they said they want to know more about what is trauma, secondary trauma, compassion fatigue, and how do you maintain self-care during internship. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please sign up for the course online. It's a really great resource. Um, Allison has done so much research on these topics and provides a lot of insight into how, you know, how to take care of yourself and avoid compassion fatigue. I remember there was uh, one moment during my music therapy internship, I would say maybe in the fourth month, and I had been, I worked in the medical setting a lot, seen a lot of patients. Uh, We work with palliative care, so we see a lot of patients who have extremely difficult cases, long-term diagnoses, or who are terminal and, you know, I had maintained pretty strong throughout and maintained a decent balance of work and life and self-care and all that good stuff. Um, but there was one day where I saw a couple patients, one of them who was doing uh, dialysis and another one who was a very young individual um, who had gotten in a severe accident, a motorcycle accident. And, you know, he was only being kept alive with machines. And, you know, there were not much chance of him surviving and recovering from that incident. So I went and saw these two patients one day, and I barely even had a session with this um, patient who was in the, in the accident. I just talked to their family for like five minutes. And I went home And once I got out of my car, once I got to my room, I just started bawling. And like, I didn't really have any connection to this patient. There was nothing about this patient that reminded me of someone in my life. It wasn't necessarily triggering any personal experiences. But I had this outpouring of emotions. And what I realized is there were all of these heavy cases that had built up over time that, you know, burdened my heart a little bit. When, when we see our patients and clients, we, we pour out, we give something of ourselves because we are naturally compassionate and empathic and we want to serve other people. That's why so many of you who are music therapists or students and interns are going into this field or have chosen this field is because you want to serve people. And so that that requires a lot of us that goes into that process of music therapy. So that was a a crazy moment for me because I didn't expect it at all. I didn't feel super sad immediately after the session. I thought it was fine. But when I got home, it just hit me. It was so much burden. I felt like I had a weight on my shoulders of all of these patients, all of these cases that have built up over time. That might happen to you sometimes. And that's just life. We're humans. We're working with humans. And we see a lot of really difficult and crazy things that might be hard to cope with. So I wouldn't say that these experiences are completely unavoidable. They do happen. I won't deny that. You know, there are going to be times where a a patient tugs on your heartstrings. Sorry, that was my phone. And 
I think to minimize that, it's important for us to just maintain self-awareness. And like going back to what I said earlier, self-care. Um, what are you feeling today? How are you dealing with this? If you encounter a situation, um, you know, a patient case that resembles something in your own life that might have some personal triggers, some transference and countertransference happening, you know, talk to a therapist about that. Talk to a mentor, a counselor. Um, maintain that awareness to process those types of things. I guess this is sort of a side tangent. Um, for interns, it's really important to know how to effectively use supervision and to know the difference between supervision and counseling or therapy. Um, a lot of stuff comes up in our personal lives, a lot of emotions that we have to deal with. And, you know, I don't necessarily recommend everyone has to see a therapist. If you're going to be a music therapist, you have to see a therapist. I don't really believe in that personally, but I think you should know that that's an important resource for you. And f for your supervision, um, you should really go to your supervisor. You can talk about that kind of stuff, but it's it should be a little bit more focused on the therapeutic process. You know, share with your supervisor like, hey, this session brought up a lot of stuff for me. You know, what do I do to overcome that so I can serve my client to the best of my abilities? And your supervisor is going to help talk through that and focus maybe a little bit less on um, like digging into like why are you feeling this way and your personal issues, but how do you overcome those things and how do you deal with those so that you can effectively serve your patients? That's just my side tangent of therapy versus supervision. Your supervisor is not your therapist. Your therapist is not your supervisor. You know, you can't talk about specific patient details with your therapist because that is in violation of HIPAA and would breach confidentiality. So if stuff comes up that you need to talk about with a therapist, like keep it super, super, super general. Focus on more of your uh, personal feelings with that. Talk to your supervisor about the patient details and stuff. So that's the difference, side tangent. So back to what I was saying before, maintain self-care regularly to avoid burnout and compassion fatigue. It doesn't have to be this big act of like, I'm going to get away for a weekend, you know, and spend a weekend at the beach or whatever. Um, that is a great form of self-care. But, you know, it's not the big acts of self-care that matter the most, it's the little things that you do every single day. Taking 30 minutes to eat lunch and to only eat lunch and not talk about work or not check your emails. This is something I struggle with because I'm a go, go, go type of person, want to get stuff done and be productive all the time. So I have to intentionally set aside time for myself to take a break and to eat lunch and just you know, talk to people and hang out because I'm extrovert. So I need that, uh, you know, interaction with people to fill me up and to energize me. Yeah. So know what works for you. And if you do these things, if you maintain self-awareness, if you're practicing self-care, utilizing your resources, um, your supervisors and mentors and setting goals for yourself, if you do all of these things effectively, you're going to succeed and blossom in your internship. And what you practice during your internship is going to set you up for the real world. When you become a professional, there's going to be other things that come up in your life, other stressors and personal problems and, and even more things that you have to think about for work too. So internship is your foundation. If you really take advantage of your internship, if you're hungry to learn and you're doing all of these things, then you're going to be ready for the real world. Internship is quite a journey. I will tell you that. For me, I grew so much during the six months of my internship. I would say that 
I transformed, you know, I had learned so much in my undergraduate degree. Um, but once I got to internship, it, it really prepared me for the real world. So that's what internships meant to do. So make the most of it. If you want to explore more about uh, music therapy internship, you should check out the book Six Month Chrysalis. These are stories, a compilation of stories from Music Works interns over two decades of the music therapy internship that we've had here at Music Works. Really amazing stories where interns share about the transformative experiences they had as an intern and the lessons that they learned. This is awesome if you are a supervisor, internship director, or professor, because at the end of each chapter, there are little reflection questions um, to help your students and your interns or, or practicum students start thinking about um, as they are going through their internship experience. Really awesome book. You can find it on musicworksinc.com and you can search for Six Month Chrysalis on Amazon. I believe there's a Kindle version and a paperback version that you can purchase. Good addition to the, your library collection. And it's only $11, so that's a plus. Well, thank you again so much for joining me on the Sound Solutions podcast. I hope this was helpful for some of you students and interns, and I hope it was informative for any of you who are listening who are not music therapists. You get an inside look into what the process of becoming a music therapist is like. We become music therapists because we love to help people. We become music therapists because we have a heart for serving others. We have a personal connection with music that we want to share with other people. Don't lose sight of why you became a music therapist because that's something that's gonna to continue to motivate you throughout your career. Continue to take care of yourself. Continue to be mindful in your day-to-day -day life. Do things that fill you up. Do things that you enjoy and you'll have a long lasting career in music therapy, or you might go beyond and explore something more. That's all for now, folks. My name is Anila, and take care of yourself today. Mm -hmm.